Good evening and welcome to the news. Uh, President Wevel Ramkalawan has on behalf of the country and on his personal behalf commended and expressed appreciation to all agencies and teams involved in the firefighting operation on the landfill yesterday. Your teamwork, professionalism and courage ensured that the fire was contained and dealt with in a short time, said the president. He has asked all the partners to keep up the good work as we seek ways to respond in such situations. Early this afternoon, the Fire and Rescue Services uh, Agency, SFRSA, announced that the fire would be extinguished before the end of the day. By noon, there were only a few spots of smoke coming out from the site of the fire. The fire is said to have started in the tires piled along the borders of the landfill late yesterday late morning yesterday and the SFRC says it is yet to determine the cause of the fire the government has planned to refurbish the Sir Selwyn Selwyn Clark market in Victoria, especially its roofing and improved storage facilities for the fish and vegetable vendors. The minister responsible for agriculture, Flavien Joubert, the minister for fisheries, Jean-François Ferrari, the chief executive officer of the agency for infrastructure, Jita Shah, and officials from the mayor's office visited the market. At, uh, on Saturday. Speaking to the media, Minister Ferrari said there are also plans to improve hygiene and ensure that products being sold are safe for consumption. We are working as a team to try and find out what are the best solutions that we can bring to a problem which seems to be getting a little bit out of hand. We have received a lot of complaints uh, from health authorities, from Victoria District, from tourism. And we need to take hold of this issue and make sure that we keep Victoria clean or we make Victoria clean because at the moment there are, there are serious issues. Now we haven't taken any, any decisions on what to do but except for a couple of immediate decisions. This concerns public health and these need to be taken. There was, there was some, some containers with fish in ice, defrosted, rot rotting away, as far as I can see, that we were told was going to be sold again on Monday. You can't have that. This is a public health concern, so we've already informed the, the health authorities that we will be, uh, that this needs to be attended to. They will come in today or tomorrow. They will deal with it. For long term, for long term issues, we will communicate. We need to talk to everyone concerned. We need to understand the needs, the constraints of everyone, and we'll try and make uh, Central Victoria a better place. We know that there are certain issues um, which have been flagged in the past. Uh, there are some areas where the roof is leaking. There are areas where we need to install some new um, roofing, uh, roofing systems as well because it's not currently covered. So um, we wanted to add on top of that some of the information we were getting today so that we could better understand the future um, functions and use of the market as well. We've had a look at um, the old butchers area as well, how perhaps we can look at um, uh, doing some renovations there as well, just to basically to in improve the standard generally inside the market. The Ministry of Health has launched a high-level intersectoral engagement forum, which is encouraging all government sectors to adopt the health in all policies approach. With this approach, any decision will now have to take into account the involvement of health. The Ministry held its first meeting today with the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Family. Policy analyst at the Ministry of Health, Dr. Sanjeev Pugazendi, said that through these meetings, the Ministry of Health also wants to build better relations with its partners, in particular to discuss issues in impacting the health and well-being of the population. These include, for example, drug addiction, obesity, unprotected sex and non-communicable diseases, including cancer and diabetes. 
The 12th edition of the International Maritime Exercise, Cutlass Express, has been launched. It is taking place in Seychelles and Mauritius as from today, the 6th to the 17th of March. Over 30 officers of the Seychelles Defence Forces are participating in the exercise. Cutlass Express, which also has an academic uh, component, is sponsored by the U.S. Africa Command uh, and conducted by the U.S. Naval Forces Africa. It was launched by the U.S. Embassy Special Advisor Good to Seychelles, Mr. James Donigan. Narcotics trafficking, human smuggling, and illegal, unregulated, and unreported fishing are just some of the crimes that affect the security, stability, and prosperity of countries in the, in the Indian Ocean and around the world. This exercise brings together countries in an effort to counter those malign influences. Through multinational cooperation, planning this year's exercise over the last days, weeks, and months, we have witnessed a consistent commitment to our core objectives to deter and neutralize illegal activity at sea. The culmination of this dedication and hard work is demonstrated here today. The execution of Cutlass Express will focus on strengthening partnerships increasing maritime do domain awareness, and leveraging regional security cooperation at sea. This will be accomplished through interdiction, search and rescue, small boat operations, and law of the sea training modules and scenarios. As a result, Seychelles and the countries of the region will be better enabled to effectively disrupt and prevent common maritime threats, increasing the security and prosperity of the entire Western Indian Ocean. Fifteen representatives from various technology-based startup companies are participating in the internationalization of businesses training. The training focuses on teaching business owners how to operate on an international market. The Division of Science, Technology and Innovation, DSTI, says it will continue to support small social businesses to grow not only in local and regional markets but across the world. The two-day training uh, has has been organized by DSTI in collaboration with the International Trade Center, ITC. So we are a joint agency of the United Nations and the World Trade Organization based in Geneva, and our mandate is to help small and medium-sized enterprises go global, export their services. Um, so I am here in the context of the UK Trade Partnerships Project, which aims to connect Seychellois startups uh, to the UK uh, market, so to foster business partnerships and also investment. So we are here doing a training on internationalization with a great focus on the UK to show the startups how they can make business in the UK, how they can find investors, potential clients, and close business deals there. We also have a great focus on uh, the investment readiness part, uh, also fundraising. President Wevel Ramkalawan addressed the 5th United Nations Conference on the Least Developed Countries uh, plenary session yesterday afternoon in Doha, Qatar, a conference with aim to identify actions and partnerships at the highest possible level to deliver on its proposed agenda. During his statement, the president laid emphasis on the importance of collective approach required to attain set goals and targets. He stated that although Seychelles does not form part of the least developing countries, being present at the conference shows that Seychelles stands united with other fellow SEEDs and African countries in advocating and understanding their needs. In advancing the support for finance, President Trump Kalawan called for the support of the adoption of a multi-dimensional vulnerability index to benefit vulnerable countries. Furthermore, he placed emphasis on the South-South cooperation to strengthen and sustain long-term partnership. We've come to the end of this news summary. Thank you for watching.